Okay, we've made some progress. There's the uh, latest bandpass curve. I've got the pip set right at about 23 megahertz. That's about 20, that's right at 22. That's right at 25. That's 25, 75 right there, which is a little bit higher than it needs to be, but I don't think that's too big of a problem. I got nice sound traps right there. It's 21.75 or 21.25. I'm sorry. Uh, you got your little. Let's see if I can get out of that trap. Turn the marker up so you can see a little bit better. There you go. Remember, this is not a uh, this is not a post injection marker, so the pip size is affected by the traps. So when you get close to a trap, your pip's going to get smaller as well. But anyway, let me let me move it back to the center. There you go. Anyway, what it's supposed to look like is now remember this is this is reversed uh, the. The high side is on the right, the low side is on the left, which is the exact opposite of what you see here. Let me get some light on that. But as you can see, that looks pretty... I got, a, I got a pretty good match now. I'm pretty happy. What was done different about all this? Uh, well, let me increase the sweep there, see if you can see that 27 megahertz pump jump come up a little bit right there. I expect that to be a little bit higher. Uh, maybe I shifted this over. Eh, well, anyway, uh, nice and flat, looks good. I got a nice sound bump. Everything's looking pretty good. What did I do different? Why all of a sudden did it start working right? I about to pull my hair out. Well, first of all, I connected up the. Uh, sorry. I connected up a the feed from the signal generator to point W like I was supposed to, rather than through the tuner feed. Second of all, I used a very short lead to the RF generator. I was having all kinds of issues with the, the signal getting sucked out, giving all kinds of weird, very, I mean, just intolerable. I thought I was just wasting my time. Uh, but the primary thing is keep these leads short. Make sure you have it through the right connection. And then everything starts working right. Read the directions and, you know. Do a good job. Don't, don't let those leads. I mean, with the long lead, it was just unreadable. All of a sudden, it's perfect. Now, I'll even swing through the uh, the bias adjustment, so we'll see what effect the bias adjustment has on it. Now, I'm adjusting the contrast. Stays relatively flat across the contrast range. Let me pump this up. It's got pretty good output, too. And I'm at the... Uh, yeah, I was a uh, wow. That was way too much. Um, I'm at the minus 20 dB scale. I can't really see that, but that's where it is. With the fine turned all the way down, so I'm hoping I'll have pretty good sensitivity. And you can see increasing the bias. Well, I mean, you start to get in, you start running into some issues with the shape of the curve. Extremely high contrast. Let me uh, pull the voltage back so you can see a little bit better. I don't know if that's something I need to worry about or not. You see it gets a little bit misshapen there. That's probably the tubes being driven into some kind of uh, limiting action. At the correct voltage, so I didn't check it, but I don't think I have to have the, the contrast turned up that high. I wonder if I should try to do anything about that. Hmm. I don't know. Well, it says to set this up with three volts, which is what I did, so I don't think I really should uh, start fooling around with me. Put that down. Anyway. There's the completed curve. I think it looks pretty good. I'm quite pleased with the way that came out. Anyway, read the directions. And everything will work a lot better. So all i got to do now is hook it back up and give it one more trial run and see how it does. And then I'll have to wait until another day or two. I just, I'm, I'm out of gas on this one. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Thank you.